I got one question to all of the people who've been defending Gerard or just, you know, sitting on the sideline of this whole situation. You know, because I, I, I've made a couple of comments about the whole, uh, the completionist, this open hand foundation scam or whatever. And I've just been sitting back waiting. But, I, I you know, I, I've watched the the back and forth for all this going on and I saw some of the comments on Twitter but I have an honest question and I want people to be honest if you're listening to this I really appreciate it if you made it here I, I cannot thank you guys enough if Carl and Muda didn't make those videos do y'all think that this do you think this $600,000 would have been donated let, hey, let's be honest do y'all think that do y'all think if, if he you know got wind of if they got wind of this and didn't do anything about it they just sat on it or they or it ne they never got wind of it at all do you think that they would have donated the money that six hundred thousand dollars at this moment because there's a lot of people out there defending gerard and even a lot of people defending like some real foolery and it's like uh why is because you like this guy now don't get me wrong i like his content too i thought he was awesome i thought he was absolutely amazing you know i love what he did with the wii u um you know the wii u store the virtual console store by preserving all those games i think that that was awesome the g4 tv stuff yeah okay i'm you know that's a whole different story i talked about a while back i want to get back into that but when you look at this whole situation with gerard i i, I personally think that he he messed up he messed up big time because you, I don't think he would have sent that money out any other way. I don't think he would have done it. I don't think him and his organization would have donated the money if Carl and them, you know, didn't, you know, say anything. And and, and that's the sad part. I, I think that with his statements that have been shown to be contradictory in Muda's 50-minute uh, video, it makes it look like he's lying. And, and that's that's really really unfortunate because you you have a guy that comes off as very wholesome he's a nice guy to 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 watch his content he he's done good things you know outside of open hand foundation like i said he's done some things that preserve games he like to complete games he like to show show off indie games i think he does a great job with that but i i, I think he messed up here y'all i i think he messed up here and this is something that needs to be um fixed i don't know how he's gonna fix it um i personally my gut feeling I, I feel like they came up with this money um out of the blue i my gut feeling and i don't think that i don't know this, this to be true but and i'm not trying to be accusatory as well you know i just feel like this money's probably been put together at the last minute you know what I mean? I I, I I think that something really bad is going on with this. I don't think it's as cut and dry as it seems. And some of his uh his statements that Mudahar, you know, uh put out makes it seem like he's done something wrong. Now, I'm gonna flip over to the response to other people. I think this whole thing on Twitter could be a case study. I think it could be a really good case study for people um the, the social aspect of liking someone or the social commentary of liking what somebody do for them now don't get me wrong there are some commentators that i like i would be really really disappointed if i found out they've done something i really would i'd be like wait a minute no not that person ain't no way but it's a possibility that that's the case you know i mean it's just something that you have to you know uh deal with because at the end of the day we're all human we all you know are susceptible to make mistakes so all of us are susceptible of doing you know criminal activity not saying that everybody will but th there there can be become a time where that something like that could happen i mean nobody wakes up to say that they're going to commit a crime or anything but i'm just saying that there's a we have the capability of doing it will we do it most likely not a lot of us won't do it but we are flawed people so with that being said you have to be careful with who you look at on these youtube streets because some of these people they're they're 
basically just acting in front of a camera. Some of these people could be very, very nasty. Some people could be genuinely who they are on the in on, on these videos. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that, oh, this is me 100 percent because I know I'm a flawed person. Now, would would I do something like absolutely egregious? No, I have a wife and you know, and I have a son that 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 depend on me. There's no way I'm going to be out here doing something criminal or something malicious. I, I have a family that that actually I have to be held accountable for, and I got to make sure that their lives is straight. So I may do some things that you may not agree with. I may do some things that that are kind of weird. But one thing for certain, I, you know. I am not. I, I will know. I, I am not knowingly going to do. I don't know how that sound. I'm I am not going to do anything knowingly that is criminal. I think that sounded right. I'm not going to do anything. Craig. I got. I got a big rep. You know. I got a big responsibility here. But you. You. You have some people that are on YouTube that you just never know how that stuff may play out. You just don't know. So you have to be very careful of who you are. You know watching on youtube and just leave it on the channel but like i said this whole thing could be a case study because of the fact that a lot of people went through their timelines defending gerard now does he do you think he's worth being you know defended i mean have at it i don't i think he needs to fix whatever's going on here immediately i don't know how he's going to do it but he needs to fix it immediately uh so i more power to you if you feel like you know hey you think he's a good guy you say he's your buddy he's your friend but um you, some people just got to call a spade a spade sometimes and and and, and it's okay because i i feel like we all need some type of direction and sometimes the best direction or some of the best criticism is from people that that love us some people that feel that we are um you know that that we are somewhat up to a standard we needed that type of criticism. I mean, I think it means more if you do. So I don't know what's going on with this situation with him as far as how they're going to get it resolved, but something needs to be done. And uh, I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, also, before I get out of here, I, I want to talk about this whole, um, what's the game called? The day after something? <laughs> I don't know. The day before. That's what it is. I don't understand how people, well, I do, and I'll get to that in a second. People are constantly getting scammed with these games, man. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I, 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 I somewhat got scammed with the definitive edition of Grand Theft Auto, the trilogy. You know, I, I felt like I got scammed with that. I mean, that game was absolutely broken. All three of the games were pretty much broken when I first got them. And has it gotten better? Yeah, but it's not up to par. Not in my opinion. I mean, will I play him? I play. I, I played three, but that's it. But nevertheless, the day before ends up coming out after a five-year battle with developing the game, <laughs> and on top of that, we had a, a you know all all these delays, and then when the game comes out, um, the company basically tries to shut down their whole operation, which you you, you kind of should have saw that coming because if you don't know how game development works or how games are really being put out there nowadays a lot of these games are especially these up-and-coming games are very tough to to make they, they cost a lot of money a lot of people have to go through indiegogo or uh, gofundme or well i can't remember what the other one's called but you got to go through all these other avenues to raise money to make games you saw what happened with shimu 3 you saw what happened with other games that were crowdfunded. They just don't play up along very well. Now, this game wasn't crowdfunded, so that makes it even worse. <laughs> because of the fact that this game has so many issues and problems. In some cases, this game is a flat-out scam. <laughs> Due to the fact that it was supposed to be, uh, I think it was supposed to be like a Daisy or uh, it was really like some a Daisy clone or survival horror MMO. And it turned out to be an, a, a looter shooter extraction game. I mean, that alone, you should be able to get your money back. That that type of stuff should be absolutely, uh, it, it, it should be absolutely banned from being on uh, Steam or whatever platform that is on. Now, I think it's since, uh, since as of now, the game has been taken down off Steam. I haven't looked to see 
Um, maybe that's something I need to go look. But I've heard reports that the game has been taken down. Rightfully so, it should be. And it's it it, it, it kind of falls back on us as the consumer. We've been falling for stuff like this for a long time. I mean, I even fell for games back, even with the Joe Montana football situation back in 2016. I fell for that. That was back in my football gaming days when I used to love football gaming, and that's all I wanted to do is play football games. I fell for that, and, you know, I think that at this point, I, I, I've been very wary of any game that's coming out. Because that game right there, like I said, football is my passion. I love it. You know, I have a whole other podcast about it. And um, I love football. But when that happened, it kind of killed my whole desire on, you know, up and coming games. I have to see them and I have to see them running for at least a good month before I decide to say, hey, I'm going to buy this game. You know, I mean, it, 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 it's just that bad nowadays. But. I don't understand how they get away with this. I mean, my thing is, do these guys get paid off of this? Like, can they get paid? Like, how does it work when you buy a game off Steam? Do they get the money immediately? Like, I, I like, I, I'm curious about how that works because now you have a company that's probably going to get away with money refund or not, uh, and they're just going to make the little bit of profit they got off of a game. They used a whole bunch of assets from other, you know, I ain't gonna say from other games, but basically off the Unreal Engine. Like, there's a list somewhere that, uh, you know, this game's been using different assets from, like, dozens and dozens of different games or whatever the case may be. And I'm like, how did they get away with this? Because it's like, you you got, you got to be kidding me. Now you, have the, now you have a situation where you can take a bunch of assets, basically. Take a bunch of assets, put them together, make it look good, get people to possibly pre-order or buy the game because they saw a, a bunch of footage that was put together real nicely. But when the game comes out, it could be something totally different. And I, like I said, I don't know how Steam practices are. And if Steam practices are to the point where these guys get paid as soon as you buy a game, people are going to be running away with, you know, some sort of profit. Look, listen, I think that this game probably needs to change some things what uh, Steam does with indie games. Because in some cases, the name indie has a connotation to people are willing to give out, you know, money. They're willing to shell out cash, even if a game is not completely developed fully, but they want to help the developer because he's an indie developer. He's not one of these AAA uh, corporate big time conglomerate big billion dollar companies that are making games an indie game could be literally one or two guys that are in a room that are putting unreal engine 5 assets together and make it look good get it green light on um steam and people start shelling out money and then when they get the actual game it, it's a problem that that's that's pretty bad and that's something that needs to be uh that's something that needs to be uh, reformed. That need to be addressed. It needs something. Needs, something different needs to be happening with that because that is a uh, that's like a I don't know get rich quick scheme. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I mean, because it, it doesn't take much to to put something together that looks good, especially with the assets that they have now on Unreal Engine. You can you can basically make a first person shooter within a matter of a, a, a couple of hours now. And I'm not saying a full game, but just the 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 notion of a first person shooter in a matter of you know a couple of hours. So that that that's something that needs to be really looked at and addressed. But I don't know, man. What, what do you guys think? I I think both of these topics are like really you know bad. You know, Gerard, his whole situation, he needs to get that fixed like immediately. You know, I don't know how you fix that, but it, it's looking ugly. And the day before, uh, whatever the game is called, um, I think the company's name Fantastic or whatever, they, they need to get their stuff together too. Or I, I don't know. I mean, how, how, how can you go after them? Do the publisher have to sue them? I don't know. I mean, how does that work at this point? Because I'm, I'm really interested in that. But I'm going to get up out of here. I think I've talked way too much, you know, on the 15-minute mark by now. 
kind of crazy how I let this ride, but hey, I had a lot to say because the end of the year is getting really weird for video games. Really weird for video games. There's a bunch of drama and the games that are out, and I'm gonna be honest, man, it, it's not really that appealing. I mean, here I am playing old Dreamcast games. <laughs> All right, man, I'm gonna get up out of here. Y'all uh, be easy. I'm out. Peace.